Hey everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, Saturday, I'm just taking a break from what I'm doing, work today. I'm about to go chill and relax with the fellas for a minute. Uh, and I decided to talk to you about something that <clears throat> is weighing heavy on my heart. So uh, it won't take long. Uh, this is a short trip. Uh, so I'm going to get right to the point. And this is probably going to twist some people's uh, attitudes and mindsets in a direction that is probably somewhat uncomfortable, uh, inconvenient, and disturbing. And those of you who have followed me for uh, any stretch of time understand what I have declared from the day I stepped out and started speaking publicly on black issues long before the internet and definitely since I've been on this this internet this social media journey for what 13 14 years I've always said I'm not here for the likes I'm not here to be liked I'm not here for the pats on the back the accolades, the praise. I'm not trying to prove I'm better than the next guy. I'm not out here to compete with no other black people who are putting in work. I'm about brotherhood, but what I will tell you is you're gonna get the truth. You're gonna get what I believe to be the truth. If you can come back with facts to prove to me I'm wrong, I've proven over time that I have no problem coming back and making an apology and offering a retraction to the statement I've made. Now, the one thing you'll find is those times are far, few and far in between because I speak on what I have invested my entire life into understanding. And when I speak it, I speak it from a place of love. I'm not here to destroy or attack, but I am here to hold people accountable and to challenge people. And so I'm going to tell you this. Black ignorance is the blindness which leads the collective to fall into the ditch of racism and oppression. Uh, you've heard me say this many times before that if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. And uh, Neely Fuller Jr. said this about racism. He said, racism, white supremacy, if you, if you don't understand it, if you don't understand how it works, if you don't understand how it impacts you, if you don't understand the mechanism and everything you think you know will only confuse you. Uh, and so what I see is a lot of people walking in ignorance, refusing to seek knowledge, receive knowledge, accept knowledge, but constantly pushing and you wonder why you fall by the wayside because you don't understand how things work. That has been a constant theme that I have talked about. Uh, the media propaganda that constantly spews out negative stereotypes about blacks across the board, whether it be black men, black women, whether it be blacks in general, whether it be the lack of black, uh, blacks in the area of academia, uh, all of these different tropes that are pushed out and presented to us, we tend to accept. We tend to ignore the actual true facts. So they line up and they tell us things and then the thing is, everybody's getting all upset about Don Lemon being uh, fired from CNN. Uh, and my thing is, I, I, I'm not a fan of anybody who pushes racial, st racial stereotypes as an exclusive phenomenon. I have talked about black on black crime. Absolutely. Black on black crime exists, but uh, any race you find, you're going to find white on crime, white on white crime, Asian on Asian crime, because most violent crime is what proximal. What does that mean? We tend to get into emotional disagreements with people we know. So then that means that we have to, if we're going to talk about black on black crime, then we must also talk about the fact that 84% to 85% of white people who are murdered are murdered by other white people, but you never hear the term white on white crime. Why? Because it doesn't fit the narrative. It was, that particular term was not created as a true representation of a social reality or a social dynamic. It was meant to create a narrative and a stereotype and a presentation and idea that black people are in inherently violent. Now, what it does not acknowledge 
is the fact that if you take any group of people and you put them in highly impoverished environments, crime rate will go up. The crime rate goes up. People are literally fighting to survive. People who are fighting to survive are going to automatically be more territorial and more violent. And the crime itself is going to automatically produce a high level of violence. So if you're talking about the elevated levels of violence, you can do that and see that across any spectrum where there is a high level of poverty. It's in white impoverished areas the same way it is in black impoverished areas. But it's only highlighted and presented in media. So when I see Don Lemon, uh, and this is a video I've watched with my own eyes, talking about the, if blacks want to do better, they need to pull up their pants. Well, that gives the impression by the statement being made that blacks are the only ones sagging. I know for a fact that's not true. I'm literally just past a white, uh, white guy sagging, literally. So that's not true. That's a that's a generational thing, and I, you know, yeah, we, we we got an issue with that. But it's a generational thing. But when you say it like that, you make it seem it's just that. Then blacks need to stop dropping out of school, as if whites don't drop out of school. But here's another thing that has to be viewed within the uh, context of this uh, assumptive or uh, presumptuous idea that you know. By not dropping out of a school, all of a sudden blacks are going to be in a competitive environment. First of all, I agree 100% that blacks don't need to drop out of school, but then we must talk about why blacks drop out of school. I wrote numerous papers. I wrote a position paper on the disproportionality of special education referrals for young black men. Young black males are referred for special education at a very disproportionate rate, despite there not being a necessary uh, or a need for as many referrals. There's a reason for that. When you start alienating young black males in the school system as early as five years old, when you start giving them designations and, and assessments like oppositional defiant disorder and ADHD, things that they can be given psychotropic drugs for. These are schedule two drugs that are highly addictive, have very little medicinal person purposes, but they tend to make black males more docile and make them sit still. All while, all of the scientific evidence says that young black, well, young children, period, do not learn best in an environment where they're forced to sit still. They learn better in environments where they move. They learn better, better in environments where there is activity going on. Black children learn better in an environment where they are literally engaged musically. That's why Ryan Clark, Incidentally, a white male has one of the most successful schools in the inner city across this country because he understood that and he literally promotes that type of behavior, not just from his students, but from his staff. And they have been for years producing unbelievable results uh, because he understands that the more emotionally uh, incited you have someone the more they retain the complete opposite of what the current education or academic system is is perpetuating or pushing but so 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 when we sit up and we look at this we're not looking at why they're dropping out first and foremost and i agree we don't need to drop out why because when we look at the dropout uh, rate it directly corresponds with the incarceration rate uh when a, a, a child a, a black especially a male drops out of school prior to getting their high school diploma, they're five times more likely to become incarcerated. That's just simply the poverty element. That's not a race element. That is a poverty element and component directly associated, associated with and connected with um, uh, poverty. Uh, but more, they're going to be five times more likely to become incarcerated. Also, they're gonna be uh, policed at a higher rate than any other group. So they're gonna, gonna be at risk. So we get that. So all, 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 here we are and we say, okay, yeah, we, need to, we, we don't need to do this. But what we're not talking about, at the same time he's gaslighting on not dropping out, is the fact that even if the black male was to graduate from school, go to college and get a bachelor's degree the high, the white white kid with a high school diploma would still out earn them on average. 
That's statistically the reality, but that's not discussed because that's not part of the gaslighting of black people. And he went on with some other things that, and he talked about uh, littering as if it's an exclusive black thing. Stop littering, start tearing up. You know, I've lived in predominantly white neighborhoods and we just don't do that. Well, that's again, a socioeconomic thing. Anybody who understands and actually studies and does the research understands that. Now, this isn't just about Don Lemon for me. This is just something that I just happen to see. And it's sort of trick. I'm like, and people are literally going hard, like, and defending him saying that. And you never see any other group sit up and say, yeah, we're screwing that up. Yeah, we really got that screwed up. And the thing is, they've trained us to police ourselves and accept things without explanation. And I've told you over and over again, one of the things that we're gonna to have to become better at is asking questions. It's not just whether or not I can see a reality or I can prove that a reality exists. It is also me asking the question why. Because in the asking the question why, now I must examine the cause. When I examine the cause, causality tells me what must be done to change it. Sitting, sitting up simply talking about what happens leaves a lot open for speculation and you are allowing people to draw conclusions without any type of proof or justification or substantiation. And that can't be done in any other area, any other facet of life and be accepted as um, proven, proven truth or justified truth. But we allow it, we allow them to consistently push on us because we don't want to do the research. We don't want to get behind the people willing to do the research. We don't want to stand with the people doing the research. We think that if a white voice says it, it has more clout and more validity than if a black voice says it, no matter how informed that black voice may be. That leads to our demise because we are constantly being led to the slaughter. We are constantly being pushed off the cliff. We are constantly being led into ditches because we don't understand how things work, because we don't understand uh, what we should be doing. Uh, we don't understand how we are being played. We don't understand that this thing we keep standing behind hasn't worked. We keep pushing black liberal, I mean white liberal ideologists, ideolo ideologies, and we keep pushing it in, in the sense of political party affiliation, uh, i.e. Democrats. But when you actually study the plight and the movement socioeconomically, politically, academically, and in so many other ways, the black, the, the, the black struggle, the black plight, the black journey, you'll find that a great deal of our suffering has come underneath uh, democratic administrations. The crime bill that decimated the black community um, was not only under a democratic administration, it was introduced and championed by the current president of the United States. And while Clinton has come out and said that it's one of the worst things that's a part of his presidential legacy. Um, Biden still standing and holding his ground will not back down off of it. Um, and a, a lot of that is just, just being old and, 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 and just, you know, recalcitrant, whatever you want to call it. He's just, you know, you know how old people get. So again, that's all of that. But at the same time, he wasn't that old. You got to understand that this man, this, this is in the nineties, in the seventies, this is the same man that fought busing of black children into white schools for equal opportunity and access to better educations. He said that, that he would, he, that would create jungles for his children. He didn't want his children operating in jungles. This is the same man that, and, and, and the idea has been pushed for decades that if you're Republican, you're racist, if you're Democrat, you're for blacks. And the truth of the matter is, is racism exists on both sides. You're talking about a left wing and a right wing. They belong to the same damn bird. 
That damn bird has been shitting on the heads of black people from day one and they just play the game. And now we're watching where there's a merging and coming together. And this is what you see with the whole Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon thing is the thing is coming together where you're gonna eventually get to see where you can't tell which party is which. Uh, there are so many different things I can get into as far as basic values, interests, and principles, and how at, on, the, on the level of our values, our interests, and our principles, white liberal thinking and ideologies don't even line up, especially for black Christians. But yet, those are the ones who push this the longest. Why? Because it's what we've always done. It's what mama did, it's what daddy did, it's what they tell. And every time that anything pops off, the first thing out of a damn's mouth is racist. And all that takes to trigger a black person is to call another white person, especially if it's a Republican racist. Nobody's looking for what is being done on either side. I don't champion either side, but I'm talking about how we tend to lean toward a side that has proven to us that they smile in our face, rub us raw on the backside every damn time. You gotta ask yourself, if Dems are so good, and we've had a pretty good run of Dems, we had eight years of, damn, Clinton, then we had eight years of Bush. Then we had eight years of Obama. And over that time, the racial gap widened, regardless to who was in office. You have to start asking yourself, what are we gaining? The black family was decimated. 90% of blacks who turn out at the poll vote straight Democratic ticket. And we've turned out in increasing numbers from the time that the Voting Rights Act uh, Civil Rights Bill was passed up until uh, Trump. Increased turnout every freaking time, every presidential cycle, 90 plus percent voting Democrat. And we have absolutely nothing to show for it because we don't understand how things work. We put so much value in the vote that we built nothing to hold anyone accountable. We built nothing to measure what was being done for us. We have no systems in place, no agendas in place, no protocols in place. None of the things that we should be having in order to measure where we're going, how we're getting there, and who is facilitating. Do we need to have allies outside of the race? Absolutely. We're not big enough to operate without them. But, not in the U.S., but we can't do it along party lines because everybody within the party ain't for it. We've got to build allies that we can hold accountable. And in order to hold them accountable, there has to be something that we're expecting that we can say you did or you did not give it. And if you did not give it, there has to be an exact and specific and immediate response that they feel. And if we can't do that, then we're never going to be able to get anything done sitting around being caught up in our emotion and gaslighted all the time should get old. I just watch. I sit up and I say, okay, they just did this. Watch what happens. And here we go. We on fire about something that had jack shit to do with us. Or they gas us up about something that happens to a black person that shouldn't have happened. We get gassed up, fired up about it for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. And then you, man, what the hell happened to Sandra Bland? What happened? Uh, just shoot, you ain't gotta go back. Ralph Yarrow, how many of y'all still yapping about Ralph Yarrow? I'm checking on him every day. Let, I'm just saying, we are in that cycle. But, and here's why it's a problem. You, you didn't set out to forget about Sandra Bland. You didn't set out to forget about uh, the other young ladies that were killed uh, by police. Uh, there's so many names that haven't gotten justice. We only got a few that have gotten justice. Um, we, you didn't set out to forget about it. Here's the problem. You were moved by your anger. Anger is an emotion, and it is a very short-lived emotion. It doesn't have endurance. You can't stay angry forever, and they know this. So they treat us like little three-year-olds. They know that we're going to get angry, but they know that eventually that anger wears off when we go back to being who we always are 
trying to fit in, trying to be accepted, trying to do what they say we should be doing, trying to live up to their standards and definition of what is, what's what's beautiful, what's classy, what's professional, all of these things, and we're policing each other to the tilt, trying to make one another act like they say we're supposed to act. Instead of embracing ourselves and loving ourselves and standing up and being what we're capable of being. Instead of starting to hold them accountable for how they treat us. Instead of holding ourselves accountable for how we treat one another. Instead of building something that we can stand on on ourselves. We're sitting around taking the crap, taking the crap, uh, taking the crumbs and accepting every little freaking thing they throw at us. Good or bad. Time is up for that. Time is up for that. I'm going to get ready to get out of here, get in, go chill with the fellas for a little bit. You guys have a good day. I'm out. Peace. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like I just ain't good enough. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.